Uh, hello, this is a uh, start, a first look at the use of uh, the sales simulation in QTVLM. And I reckon we might need more than one video on this because this is, in a sense, the whole, it's demonstrating, in a sense, how you use QTVLM for navigation on the water. And it just happens to have a very good, realistic uh, 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 sailboat simulation. Well, we can simulate powerboats too, but that's any, any, almost anybody does that. Uh, this is for sailing. So what that means is we have, a, we have a wind. We load a wind field, a forecasted wind, into the region we're dealing with. And we have a polar diagram that describes the performance of the boat. And that's that. Then how do you drive the boat? You just turn the, turn the rudder. I mean, turn the wheel or adjust the rudder. And, um, and the angle that you end up, the angle between your boat and the wind and the sails, determines how fast you go. And if you want to change your speed, you've got to either change your sails, change the wind, or change the angle. So it's like that. So, but let's get started on this. And uh, maybe, well, let's first look at the polar. And we'll use the basic, we'll use the default polar. You can use any polar diagram. So I'm here, let's see, I'm going to boat. And then the pole, we'll use the default polar, polar, um, wind polar analysis. Now, oh, this is the big view. Can I make that smaller? Oh, I don't think I can. Well, I'm going to come back. We'll use a smaller one in a moment. Um, but this is the polar diagram for 20 knots, and you can put uh, look at it for all the different speeds. But let's say I change this and go to like 15 knots, 15 knots. So this is now 15 knots of wind, and then you click over here. The way this the way QT VLM, you click here, and so here's what it says. So if you're sailing at 90 degrees, true wind angle. So that's not the apparent wind on the boat. That's a true wind angle. It's 90 degrees. Then you should be going. You read that over here, right about here. Uh, see, 90 degrees. You should be going with 15 knots of wind. You're gonna, you're gonna have, <coughs> you'll have an apparent wind speed of 18 knots, 18.4, and apparent wind angle 54. You'll be going 10.7 knots. 10.7 knots. And uh, your velocity, your your uh, progress upwind is zero. You're not you're sailing 90 degrees to the wind, to wind. So then, if you go into the wind, this is now this angle where the red turns into the green. That's your at 15 knots of true wind. That's your optimum angle to sail forward to make make progress to weather, and that's at that angle. And you and that's a he, apparent wind angle is going to read 30. The true wind angle is what? It's 45. And you should be driving. You should be going about 8.1 knots. Likewise, this is your optimum downwind angle. And if you go and further and further downwind, you're going to go slower and slower. But this boat apparently could go dead downwind at about uh, what's that? Um, boat speed eight knots. And not a good angle, obviously, not a good angle. Here is its peak speed, peak speed of the boat, and so forth. So that's a polar diagram, and that's the way that works. And so we can close that. And, uh, and you can change that, you can add your own, you can improve it, all those are features of the program. We can also be using, we're gonna be using over here a small, small polar diagram that we'll use while we're, uh, while we're underway. Um, okay, so let's look at some of the setup that we have to do before we even start driving the boat. Because we want to, basically we're set, we gotta set up the program uh, to uh, uh, to look the way you want it and measure what you want. So let's start and look at the boat. We're going to have to come back at the instruments. I'll show you a little bit about you want. You're, we're, uh, the instruments are a key factor here, obviously, in driving a boat. You want to have all your instruments set up the way you want them. But let's go to the boat and look at what well, boat settings. Just to get started, let's look at all of them. Boat name. Okay, so I'm in the, look at these are tabs. Name. Polar, waves, etc. So let's go back to name. What's in the <coughs> nothing? Much. We don't care the name size. This is now this. This is the size of this boat here that appears on the page, and it's the middle of the scale here, and that looks about fine. I don't know what the default is, where this shows up on the default. We can actually change that. I'm not going to get into that now. We can put a picture of a 
particular kind of boat here or we can actually put a picture of a kind of boat that we're going to actually scale and have it be the exact right dimension so when you zoom way in to the you know the size of the boat or two or three boat lengths your boat's the right size we're not doing any of that now but the only thing with practicing the sailboat simulation is you you want to be if this icon too small it's not going to look right Okay, so then the polar, we've got the polar diagram. This will, we'll use this one. You can use, this. these are the ones that I've got loaded, that I happen to have loaded, but you can go into this place here, this server, and download any one of hundreds, hundreds of different boats. Okay, and so these are, these are all adjustments, adjustments that you can force onto the boat, which work which are can be tested with a simulation which are under effect when you do the simulation in other words we can we can say that we're not going to do as good as the polar does we're going to go do 90 percent of the polar going upwind and maybe you know maybe we somehow do better maybe do 105 percent of the polar going downwind and let's just say for some prat we're not doing it now uh but um you could say underway that uh, if your grib file takes you into night then you're going to maybe make a less efficiency in a, like a cruising situation maybe and then this also here um, this is going to be taken into account as well we are going to just go right by the polar diagram we're not going to limit the, how close we can sail to the wind or how far we can go downwind we're going to just if you if you drive down there you're going to take what you get uh, and so forth all right, the sales, we're not doing anything with this as a display factor we're not using for sales. Uh, the polar, what's here? Okay, this will also deal with waves. Now, we don't, I'm not doing that now. That'll come back in a later section, later discussion. But you can simulate the effect of the waves. So we can have various, the waves are going to slow the boat down. Or maybe if you're going downwind, the waves can speed the boat up, so forth. So, but there's wave correction tables. We're not doing that right now. There's also cross beam seas here. That's a correction you can make. And there's a, f a factor for gusts. And we're not doing gusts. I don't know if I have gusts in the forecast or not, but you can have gusts affecting how we progress. Okay. All these things are going to happen when you, as soon as we turn on the real wind, the real wind can have gusts in it. The real forecast, the real forecast could have big waves in it and so forth. And that will all be simulated realistically uh, as you drive the boat. Okay, what's this? Okay, here's a thing we want to be check is right. This means we're going to sail all the time. But if you want to, and you can simulate it, you can say, if the I'm going to have a, a, a real polar, i got a real polar, and I'm going to have a real wind field that I'm going to download from somewhere. And if that wind and that polar just lets me sail at, say, three knots, I can't go any faster than three knots, then I can make this hypothetical and say, well, in that case, turn on the engine and turn on the engine and go six knots. So you could set this at, say, if I drop below three knots, uh, turn the engine on and go six knots or something. But if you're racing, then you have to always zero, zero, and we're going to be always sailing. We may turn the engine on to look at some interesting things later on, but we'll do that all manually somewhere else. So this was zero, zero. Tax and again, you can penalize yourself. You can say, uh, you can say it's going to take me. Uh, it's going to uh, tack and jibe during tack and every time I tack, I'm going to lose speed by some percentage of my polar speed here, and it's uh, during and a crank is five minutes for for so many minutes there. We're not going to do that either right now dimensions that doesn't that's when you're setting the real size of the boat we're not doing that circles on the boat that's just navigational thing it doesn't we're not doing that now this is we can set a, we can when with a practice wind we can actually randomize that wind and i may actually come back and do that and we can also if we have a grip file loaded we don't have to start at the exact grip time here we can actually start at some earlier time and variation doesn't mean that does not matter that's just do you want true or magnetic displays so that's all the boat setups and we've checked that and that's all right let's just take a, a quick look here at the instruments uh, setting up the instruments for the for the program um, 
Okay, and now, so, and I think we have other videos on this, but let's review it because it's, you gotta, gotta have instruments for this. So we'll go to preferences, preferences, instruments. And here's where you decide what instruments are showing. And these are the ones with the check marks in are showing. And then these are the ones that have a graph, a plot with them. And we may want a plot, for example, uh, uh, this one we don't need for now. I'd, I like the plot maybe, well, I'll leave it on. The true wind, uh, the true wind directions, okay. V uh, velocity made course, that's the main one we're caring about right now. And we're gonna plot it, look at a graph of it, and so forth. These are the speed through the water and so forth. So that's that, uh, ignore pitch, we can, we're not doing heel and pitch, but uh, we, we don't want the pitch anyway if we are. Set active waypoint to Nima. Okay, none of this none of this matters for what we're doing now. Okay, so that's the instrument. So here's the other main thing: the default the default location of these instruments here are all across the bottom. You know, they they have a size roughly the size that's here, all across the bottom, and one row across the bottom. Now you can change that to be a row all along the left here, like that. And or, and then you can do this button and you can change them, change the size. But once you've moved them, like I've moved these up here, once you've moved them, you cannot change the size. You'll only change the size of the ones that are locked down here. So that's uh, getting, okay. So now when, so they're gonna all start out on this side or on this side and we have to move them up here. So, oh, well, you, you could leave them all down here. It's just when you're navigating and looking at this thing, you don't want to have to go down a hole. You want to organize. You won't even have anywhere near all of these here. You'll have some, and you maybe make them bigger. And the way you make the, move the instruments and make them bigger is boat, instruments, and then, um, well, show instruments. That, show instruments is the same as this button right here. Well, right there, okay. So, uh, boat, instruments, uh, and then we want to freeze the dial, no, freeze the LCD. So they're checked, they're frozen. Now, be, now if they're unfrozen, you see you can grab this guy and move him around. Or if you want to, you make him bigger or smaller, something like that. And so that's the way you, you set and move them, put them where you want them. For now, I just have it set this way. Uh, we're gonna look at, eventually look at pretty much all of these. Well, maybe not all, but something like that. All right, so that's the instruments. That's, uh, now that's already 12 minutes. Um, let me uh, get, that. okay, I've gotta unfreeze these. Boat, instruments, I'm not, I mean, not unfreeze them, I have to freeze them. Okay, so let's, let's see, sailing conditions. We've been all through that, instruments set up the heading oh, okay there's another thing here too to look at and i didn't i didn't quite finish so boat boat settings and then go down to other settings and now there's a couple things to look at here one is this is the specific length of the heading line and for right now what we're doing it doesn't matter I just have this short little stub of a heading line sticking out 50 meters. It doesn't matter. But here's where we come in and uh, we'll make the heading line longer. When we start get navigating in current, then we're going to want this heading line, you know, maybe half a mile out or something like that. That's if just points right straight out the direction a boat is pointed like that. And this, uh, at reckon reckoning style, we're going to do based on the boat speed. And we're going to, let's see, do we have any time controls here? No, no. Oh, yeah, and the time is starting out at six minutes. But we can also control that here. And I'll show you what that means. That means that's going to put a line in front of the boat, a line in front of the boat that says uh, uh, where you're going to be in Right now it's set to six minutes and it's going to have a line in which way you're actually moving the COG and and which and how f and um, Where you're going to be in six minutes that'll all be clear when we crank on the crank on the engine here I mean crank on the wind. Okay, that's that and let me see any else else with a simulation keeps going Okay, uh, well here's the thing. I think what I'll do is just get started and then we'll look at a couple things and then I'll stop here 
and come back and then we'll do a part two or it looks like maybe part three now since I had such a long background but so first of all we need wind now we can do this all with a fixed wind and that's the way I want to start but you can't load a fixed wind a steady f like, like I want to just say let me make the wind come out of here at 10 knots or something like that everywhere in the world and make it absolutely constant and that's the way I want to start practicing driving the boat in the wind you know every sailor's delight absolute rock stable wind so forth so, and then later we'll just ra randomly grab whatever the wind is in this part of the world right this moment and use it uh, but I can't even get in here see this is this is where you set the wind to a fixed wind. I can't get in until I load wind of some kind so what I can do is just just say click this button or do a shift drag and get a little region there and then right click and say load to partial grip that's just loads that's gonna load a GFS wind GFS 0 0.5 degrees resolution every three hours for five days it's just a quick way to get wind but now for the time being I want to override that okay so here by the way this is also not a good model for this inland here this is you know if I'm out here in the ocean see that's a that's that's a good well it's probably right right it's, these are a very good model out here in the ocean but once you get in here on the inland this may or may not be true we have to look at other models but that's not our subject now furthermore I'm gonna override that so I'm gonna go up here to corrections and I'm gonna force the wind I'm gonna force the wind to be 10 knots from the north zero 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 Yes. Ah, maybe. Let me just. I'm going to make it from 005. 005. And then, oh, this is a really nice subtle feature. I'm going to come back to that later. But we're going to have no currents, so I don't want to put on any currents. We can also later, and definitely will do it in these demos, we're going to just put, uh, not only have force the wind to be exactly what we want, but then we'll force the current to be what we want. And uh, that's that. Okay, close. Okay, now we have the wind and the current. I mean, we have the wind exactly that. And you. Oh, okay. So now we start to simulate. Well, we can we can turn this on over here. Yeah, and it's no. It's got ten knots. Okay. It's got the right one, and this all works. Okay, good. So now, let's just turn on the simulation. And you can do that two ways, or I know two ways, or maybe others. Uh, you can go here and do the simulation, or you see I'm on a Mac. So that little strange thing there means Option, Option plus S key. On a PC, you would do it with a Control plus S key. Control S for a PC or uh, command S for a, no option S for a Mac or hit this right here plain language button well I'll start it right there okay so now that's running and the instruments are coming on now the simulation always starts with the boat head to wind always starts head to wind now uh, and that you see we started head to wind and our speed is probably going to be zero better be zero. Or is it zero? Oh, it's not zero. Why is it not zero? Oh, because, <laughs> that's interesting, the boat is not actually head to wind. It's five degrees off the wind. Remember, I c the wind direction is 005. If we were really literally into the, wait just a minute. We sh well, okay, I'm going to let that go. I'm going to pause and test myself here at the moment but we have a uh, 10 degrees and um, the have a uh, point five point nine well anyway we know when we turn we let me just okay now I'm gonna turn right a little bit and you see if I want to turn right this boat's gonna turn up here with us and um, if I'm gonna turn right let me just turn right a little bit and so that's the way that works so that's the rudders over now it's over here and all the time the rudder is over here it's turning and when I want to stop and bang bring it back to the center is right there now okay so now what we're doing let's just zoom in here a little bit um, uh, zoom in the wind is 10 knots from 005 
this is the ground, this we didn't really have, we have no current. With no current, the so-called true wind and the ground wind are the same thing. That's another story, but not for now. Okay, and so um, let's see here now. What's our true wind angle? Our true wind angle is 8 degrees. Oh, that's still, we're basically luffing still. So let's go, let's go more here. Let's go around to some kind. Now notice that the little mini polar over here is following exactly what we're doing, right? So there, I've just a little bit, a little bit beyond the favor favored angle here. I'm, um, my uh, true wind angle, where is that true wind angle? Should be prominent here somewhere. True wind angle is 49 degrees. You see at 49 here, and uh, does it say what I'm doing here at 49? Yeah, right there is 49. Maybe do I have to actually, I may have to move it to see it. Okay, there's 49. Yeah, read at the top. It's 49 degrees. And my speed through the water is 8.24 knots according to, the, according to the polar diagram. Now, in this case, I'm going to be, I'm simulating it. I'm going to be doing exactly what that says because that is what's determining what I do. So what I see on the instruments here is going to be exactly what I see over there. So, so this now, um, so you see we're going here. Let me do a couple more introductory things and then we're going to come back in the next video and uh, do, uh, do some more interesting things. But let's look first to this track. You see this track is here. And that track has got all of that information stored in it. The true wind speed, the true wind angle, I mean the true wind direction, the true wind angle, the cog, the sog, and the, and, the other, and the course and speed through the water, they're the same because there's no current. But that's all stored in the track here. Now, at any time I want to, I can go up here and say boat. Uh, where's tracks? Oh, no. Okay, no, no, here it is. Boat tracks. And I can say um, archive this track. Archive this track right here. Archive current track. And, and I'll give it a name, and uh, oh, this is test getting started, right? Okay, so that's the name of a track that I stored. So now then, when we're actually doing something and going to study our behavior of the boat and so forth, then I can always come back. So what I would do then, generally, when I'm starting a simulation, well, wait just a minute. Let me illustrate something first. At this point, I'm not stopping the boat. I'm not stopping the boat. I'm not, uh, all I'm going to do is stop the simulation. So I'm going to do command, uh, option S and stop the simulation. Now, I've stopped the simulation. And I can talk. I can walk away. I can go get coffee. I could eat lunch. I could do whatever I want to do. And I come back. And I start the simulation again. Option S. Now, you see, that boat didn't start head to wind. Because I am not starting a simulation. I am continuing a simulation I already started. Therefore, it just keeps going. And in fact, when I was over there getting coffee or going to lunch or going home for the night or something and forgot to stop the boat, that boat keeps going. So in the morning, you'll come to work, open up the machine, and see your boat's up on land somewhere uh, like that because the boat keeps going. So that means that, and that track's going to be there. So that means if we want to start studying things and so forth, what you might do, and let's see, where is it? Uh, oh, hmm, am I going to find it here? Oh, yeah, re uh, that was lucky. I did it for reset the track. So I'm just resetting the track right now. And so then it's going to start over again and leave the track. Now, uh, that reminds me of something I did not say. Now, where would, now again, there's some things you can do while the simulation is running, and, and lo, but most things, in a sense, you can't do. You would have to stop the simulation, do it, and then start the simulation again. You're, in a sense, just pausing it by stopping it. If I want to really stop this, well, let me come back. Let me go to the point I was getting to, uh, which is, um, let me go to boat boat settings. I've 
should have pract figured out where this is. I, maybe it's under boat settings. Yes, it's right here. Track accuracy. We don't want default. You want very high. For the you, you can w when you're really underway and on your boat, you're going to not want to track as high resolution as you can. But for this for practicing on land and you know training and so forth, I would turn this on to very high. Then you can see like then you can see if we're doing a if we're doing a tack or something. You can actually see your speed as you go through the tack. You know things like that. Maximum length none. Auto save every 15 minutes. This is this puts it. This copies. This backs it up on the computer. That's you know it, that's not so critical to us at the moment for a training like this. But if you're underway, if you're underway, you want to you you're underway. You want to absolutely save your trail, your track. You may want to, for example, come home by this. You know you safely got there. Let's say it's kind of hazardous or tricky tricky waterway, and you got there on a given track. You, uh, you want to absolutely save that track and not lose it. You want to do everything in the world you can not to lose that track. And so therefore, you do want to autosave it, maybe more than every 15 minutes. But anyway, you save it because in um, uh, you may want to go home that way right on that same track or keep a record of it for your next. If it's a race, you want to keep track of what you did exactly for that race and things like that. So we, but we don't care for now. So okay, so that's that. We got the track set at fine steps. And now let's see where we are. What else? and then I can put this cursor on here and read all the, the track information. Now, once you're actually sailing, you're going to have other information on there. Like you're going to have percent of your pole. Like we're sailing exactly the polar speed, so that's not uh, there's no news on that. But this this is track record. It's going to also include your the percentage of your polar speed, and it's this track record that's also going to be how you build and improve prove your um, your own polar diagram how you, you get all that data and improve your polar diagram so let me just do one other thing before we start before so oh and this now this is what I talked about earlier we can't even see that little stub of a heading line because the heading line and the COG predictor are exactly the same when you have no current you see, they're right in line, so it doesn't matter. But as soon as we have current, these the, the boat's going to go this way, say, and the boat's pointed this way. And then we want those lines to be some kind of comparable length so we can carefully judge how much we're getting set. But for now, it doesn't matter. But what this dot is telling us is, well, first of all, this line shows which way we're going. And this dot, where is my reckoning time? Six minutes. This boat shows this dot here shows where that boat's going to be in six minutes. And again, we're dealing real time here. We're dealing real time. Uh, nothing is scaled up or down in the actual clock. Okay, so let me um, let me just show one thing, and then we're going to study it in more detail in a moment. Um, Right now, this is the uh, this is speed we're going. That's a there's no current. That's current speed, current distance, velocity made course. So this is a velocity made good in the direction we want to go. But you, there's nothing in there. And why is there nothing in there? It's very simple. We have not told this boat where we want to go. So it can't tell us the course to the next mark. It doesn't know where it is, and it doesn't know the distance to the next mark. Right, so if we want to tell it where we want to go, and and that's what you do with routing, you'd be following a route that you did, you compute it or analyze one way or another, or we can just this button here. You see, what's that say? Go to waypoint. That's a nice button. I, I think somewhere earlier in instructions, I might have said, uh, take that off the take. The, you know, we don't need that. We definitely don't need this. But, I mean, when you're practicing at home, but this is actually pretty nice. I think we're sort of have the default. This is actually the default toolbar up here. But anyway, this button here. Click that. And now let's say we click. Where are we going? We click here. Let's let's say that's where we're going. Right there. And so what's that told us? Well, first of all, it's a sign that the boat now knows that's where we want to go. Putting the cursor here, it says it's one it's 1.8 miles away. And that's at 27 degrees. Um, it's 27 degrees to get there. What 27? Oh, heading heading 27. And you see now, look here. We've got information. 
it, uh, distance distance to the mark 1.7 miles 72 and the course to the mark is 027 whereas the actual direction we're going here is 054 and the sp and so the boat speed is 8.2 but the progress we're making to that mark in other words the speed that we're going here we're going to ultimately have to tack back and forth here right but and the progress that we're making along this line which is basically this this point just 90 degree projection down to here. So if I had if I had a green dot of where I'm actually going to be, and then I put down here like a yellow dot of where my how close I'm getting to the actual mark, that would be here. This is a 45. De this is 90. This is a 90 degree angle right down here, perpendicular, per projected. And th this is an angle. Let's say this angle is alpha. Right now that angle al that's 54 minus 25. That's the number of degrees this is. This speed here this speed that we're making good this way that's this number that is just this speed times a cosine of this angle the difference between these two and that's uh, 30 um, oh I don't have a I, well I'll, I'll do one last thing let's see if this works here I've got a projector so this is 30 30 degrees and that's 8.2 so 8.2 times uh, 30 cosine equals 7.1 see 7.1 okay so I'm going to stop here this is the whole trick play this is how this is the speed you get to where you go and that's where I want to spend the next time on I'm gonna come back with this video and concentrate on this guy how you sail towards this guy and optimize it then we're going to put in current then we're going to switch to real waves and uh, things real wind and things like that Okay, thank you very much. I'll come back to part two in a, in a little while.